What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here alongside Josh Davis. Welcome to a little bit later, but a Wednesday link live here on, what, two weeks before the NFL draft, Josh? We're getting closer and closer. Not next Thursday. The Thursday after that, we're going to be live for round one, having a bunch of fun. Hope you guys are going to join us for that. How are you doing tonight, Josh? Anything going on? Uh, doing well. Um, not anything crazy, and it's you know just a little bit of a dying down of just this time of year as we've talked about and everything else. There's, there's not a ton of news, but there's a little bit, and right before we're going live here, it uh, looked like reading the tea leaves and everyone who's yeah. you know reading the uh, the thumbnail or the title of this uh, unfortunately you know the giant killer seems like the writing's on the wall if they're giving away his jersey number and everything that side so uh it, it, it's disappointing but you know it, it was probably not extremely unexpected based on the signings the acquisitions other people that they've already brought in uh and the right. fact that you don't get a deal done so quickly but yeah boston scott it, it'll be it'll be sad to not see him in the midnight green we will say that yeah, I'm trying to pull up the tweet right here as uh, if I can get it up on our screen. Obviously, they're giving out the jersey numbers for all the players that they have signed over the course of the past couple of weeks. And while we already knew that there was going to be, you know, zero for Bryce Huff and eight for C.J. Garner Johnson, you now have a scenario where Davis Price is going to be rocking the number 35 from the running back perspective. That's, of course, Tyrion, D D uh, Tyrion Davis Price and 35, formerly Boston Scott. And that is kind of your indicator there that uh, he is probably not going to be coming back with the Philadelphia Eagles and Boston Scott has kind of mentioned this he's hinted about it at Twitter he famously had that tweet a couple of days ago Josh where he said man if I could just grow a bunch and be a defensive end I too could get paid like Bryce Huff got paid a couple of weeks ago and Boston Scott has done some incredible things for Philadelphia but I mean let's be real here Josh last year the writing was on the wall they barely used him I mean a couple of years in the past he was getting you know four yeah. five six carries a game this past season there would be stretches where Boston Scott would do Nothing. They wouldn't even give him the football. Now, that was kind of an overall offensive issue where they just wanted to run Kenny Gainwell. But the fact that Boston Scott, his number seems to be replaced, the writing is on the wall, they're not going to re-sign him because, again, if you're just joining us, he's technically a free agent, and the fact they're giving his number away is a pretty good indication that he's not going to be coming back. Right, and definitely for the past history of, you know, usually it, it's, you kind of wait to the last second. Not that it's impossible, but but usually with Eagles, for sure, sure it's like, hey, we're going to save that number because so-and-so, you know, that that's their number. If we're trying to work something out, we're going to make something happen. They'll come back. They'll get the number. But, yeah, we're uh, – unfortunately, again, to your point, I mean, I think it's more of just like that emotional investment, but not as much of the, si the side of saying like, all right, well, it's, it's uh, Boston actually getting out there and getting snaps or reps because, you know, e even – as as little as he got last year, it was more than Rashad Penny. So you know, we could say that it was more than Rashad yeah. Penny. Not that that was yeah, much, but uh, but with Saquon Barkley there, I mean, come on, like he he wasn't really going to. And then you of course have Kenny Gainwell. So uh, as far as like, is this a huge impact on the team? No one's going to say yes, but it is in terms of just kind of the morale and emotional investment because it, it's nice to see Boston on there. I mean, a tons of the mic'd up videos and just all the other stuff that he did. Yeah. He seems like a very jovial, fun type of guy to have in the locker room. So. I, I don't know, nothing major, uh, but, you know, just again, as far as what it means to the Eagles organization, it will be strange to not see him here, but well wishes wherever he ends up, uh, he, he probably did. I'm still, I would love to see them in the same room together because to your point earlier about the Bryce Huff and like cloning himself and same everything guy. like that, same there guy. are so many similarities between those two, so you never know, maybe he's just uh, hiding out right there, but we'll see. Of course, if you're... Just joining us, the other uh, player who is obviously gone from the jersey numbers, which, again, is not a guarantee, but if you're an unrestricted free agent and they just gave away your jersey number, it's a good indication you're not coming back. You're seeing Julian Okwara will be wearing number 52. That was worn by Zach Cunningham this past season. And, Josh, we forget that Zach Cunningham, I mean, A, was on the roster this past year, B, played a bunch, and C, has been a free agent for the past three and a half weeks. So the fact that Philadelphia, who is very much a linebacker-needy team, even probably still today, has not brought him back on a very cheap one-year deal. I think, as we mentioned, the writing is on the wall here that Zach Cunningham, one of your other defensive starters, is no longer going to be here. And honestly, we wish him the best. I think he had moments, but if Zach Cunningham's your best linebacker, your linebacker depth chart is pretty bad. That's no offense to Zach Cunningham. It's just true. I mean, it just, it just simply is very, very right. true. And I'm pumped for a season where Philadelphia's weakest link is not the linebacker position. I think it's going to be pretty good this year as long as Dean stays healthy and Devin White gets back to a couple of years ago, Devin White. Absolutely. Yes. Devin White is, is a huge piece of that. And, and to your point, if Zach Cunningham was a backup and, you know, more of just kind of the rotational piece or really just a reserve in that sense, then fine, whatever. But yeah, it, it's uh, writing on the wall from this sense. Uh, shout out to Anish David, a member for one month who, who said here, draft season, let's go. And to that point, 
maybe you draft a linebacker. Edron Cooper maybe. is obviously the first priority for everyone who's gone through mock drafts and you see all the posts on Twitter and just really everywhere for Edron Cooper. Uh, but really, you know, name, name your pick. You have other guys out there, a junior Colson who would be awesome. Um, and then even later rounds, like a Cedric Gray from North Carolina. So I'm right. hopeful that Howie at least invests in it somewhat with the long term. But again, with Devin White there, like he's got a lot to play for, and we've talked about it on a number of different shows. Like, there's reason to be optimistic about him. Some people want to, you know, bring up yes, he's not been as good, but he recognizes that, and it's a different it's it's a different type of change from previously of going like, oh, hey, we're gonna bring in a, a Shaq Leonard here. Right. Like, this is not. This is a 26 year old dude. Like, this guy is not limited by athleticism. He's not limited by injuries, really. Now he was a little bit banged up, but it's not a serious, significant injury. So he could come here. I'm confident he'll turn it around. Very excited to see what he does. And, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, without question, N'Kobe Dean is Howie Roseman's guy. So, you know, can he turn it around? Can he actually show something and stay healthy? The, the Eagles season is going to rely quite a bit on that. I'm not going to lie. It will re rely quite a bit on N'Kobe Dean and his performance. It really is fascinating how different the roster can look three weeks from now, really. I mean, two and a half weeks. But essentially, you get past night two of the NFL draft. Philadelphia has presumably three draft picks. They could have more. They could have less, depending on trades up and down. But you could see two new defensive starters. Like, if you imagine Philadelphia taking Cooper DeJean at 22, who had an incredible pro day, a private workout. We didn't get any footage of it. But from all scouting reports that were there, I mean, he absolutely balled out. Faster than Trent McDuffie in the 40-yard dash. 16 reps of 25 yeah. on the bench. I mean, he was really good. And for everyone saying, oh, you know, can he play a corner in the league? He's extremely, extremely fit for the National Football League. If you lend him at 22 and you trade up in the second round and get Edron Cooper, you have two new stars on the defense. Now, are they starting 24-7 in terms of every single snap? No, but they're going to find ways to get on the football field in this defensive roster, which, again, we just talked about. Better without Zach Cunningham when you replace him with Devin White. It's better with C.J. Gunnar Johnson back there whenever you replace the bevy of safeties they rolled out this uh, this past season, you know, mainly Kevin Byard. It's better Hopefully, at cornerback with year two of Keely Ringo, maybe a uh, revitalized James Bradbury, although, you know, cross your fingers on that one. Darius Slay, potentially his final year, well, and year two of Jalen Carter and year three of Jordan Davis. Like, there can be some big changes on this defense, and I'm excited to see what they can do just to make it better. Now, I pivot that by saying, Josh, you still believe, we talked about this last week, you still believe they're going offensive line with their number one overall pick, right? Yeah, as much as I don't want that to happen, if it realistically, I, I do think that it's going to be offensive line. So I, I I would prefer it to be a defensive player. I, I've said this a number of times, but yes, realistically, if you look at Howie Roseman, you talked about it on your show, you brought it up. Um, a lot of different people have been mentioning it within Twitter and everything else too, but like the canceling of visits yes, or what's going yes. on here. It's like a top 30 visit that is it happening? Is it not happening? Who knows what the full story is there, but it does kind of allude to the fact of like, okay, in the past, a top 30 visit was everything for the Eagles. And it's, it's a lot for a lot of teams, but it was absolutely everything for the Eagles. So I think Anthony DeBono was the first one that I said or saw that brought this up, but it's like, Hey, perhaps if Howie Roseman is looking at this and saying, well, you know, maybe teams are actually going in there and saying, like, is this giving away too much? The Eagles are for sure going to go off of that, those top 30 visits, and that gives them too much of a key into, okay, well, we don't need to trade up because right. the Eagles are going to get these guys. Perhaps. So if if Howie Roseman goes, yeah, you know what? We have enough information on one guy. We don't necessarily need to bring them in for a top 30. That makes some sense. But it is curious because – We've had what I think we're up to like four or five at least visits that were reported and then five backtrack think, yeah. and yeah yeah so uh, I don't know it'll be interesting interesting to see there yeah Anthony uh, Debono from Pro Football Network made a really good point he said you know the Eagles drafted four of their first five picks last year were all people who had top thirty visits and Philadelphia has been very very in on bringing you into the Novacare complex getting an in-person interview, an in-person private workout, and then drafting you. And it seems like Philadelphia, I talked about on my show today, are trying to mask a little bit on who they are, you know, bringing in for conversations because while a lot of people will say in the comments section Howie Roseman doesn't draft well, he still had some pretty darn good drafts. He's definitely nailed plenty of draft picks, and Philadelphia's front office has been sure. one of the shining lights in the National Football League. They're one of the best. It's at least top five. They're very much considered that by other people in the league, whether the fans believe it or not. And if you're sitting there as, you know, the Carolina Panthers, you're sitting there as the Detroit Lions, who P uh, PFN talked about, you know, adding – 
the top 30 visits to their little Twitter bookmark page. You want to draft better, you could look to Philadelphia and see who they're looking at to be a very good indication. They brought in a ginormous wide receiver from Florida State. They've been working out multiple offensive linemen. Seven, I think, is the number right now. Double the next amount for position group cornerback. They've met with four people so far that we know of at the Novacare Complex. They're really doing their due diligence. And to start the conversation, we mentioned offensive line and cornerback. Those seem to be two pretty darn good uh, indications that I would bet would be the first round for Philadelphia if we were betting on it right now. Although, Josh, I do want to mention, you and I are doing something pretty interesting here for the NFL Draft. We're trying to change things up. So last year, we gave away a bunch of jerseys during the NFL Draft, and if you were super chatting, uh, you could go ahead and get in on the action. We're changing it up, though, to have it a little bit more, a little more interactive. So right now, we're doing an NFL Draft League, and the person who wins this NFL Draft League, which I'll explain in a second, is going to get a jersey, and then we're also going to give away another jersey randomly to anybody who joins the league as well to join just send a venmo to at the philly special josh and i share that venmo but it's josh's name but it's still both of our venmos drop a venmo there one dollar one entry obviously multiple dollars multiple entries as we talked about before that gets you into uh, getting the jersey raffle but it also gets you into the fun if i could put this on the screen there we go it gets you into the fun of our nfl draft league where you try and predict the first round of the NFL draft, which is basically impossible, but our little draft league that Josh has built is going to tell us who actually gets it as close to being right as possible, and that person is going to get a Eagles jersey of their choice. So if I can show this on my screen here, Josh, let me make sure I have mm -hmm. this thing pulled up. It's going to look something like this. He does it via the office football pool, which is right there, and you are going to have a chance to go pick by pick. It's multiple choice and try and figure out who's the first pick, the second pick, the third pick, the fourth pick. Again, it doesn't link to the actual team. It's just the pick, and it's going to be multiple choice. And if you drop a Venmo, we can get you the link to go ahead and sign up and join our league. And then the winner, whoever gets close enough, is going to go ahead and get a jersey. And then we're also going to do the same kind of drawing that we've done before, where $1, one entry, $10, 10 entries. It all aggregates and grows via the Venmo, and then we draw the jerseys. Did I get that right, Josh? We've been talking about this for the past couple of days. Yeah. I, think I, I think I nailed it, right? You nailed it. Yes, absolutely. And I, I didn't realize or didn't think about this, but I will have a link in the description. I, I'm going to work on that here in a second. But for people watching it back, it will be there now as you're watching it, but a link in the description for the Venmo. So if you want to send it after the fact, that works too. Uh, but yes, this is going to be exciting. As you can see too, I mean, just with the, the screen share, it's, it's impossible for us to know who it's going to be. So there's three options on just about every single pick, and then there's an other yep. option. So, you know, it, maybe your odds are better to use some others on some of those, but on others, it, it may not. Uh, but yeah, good luck to everybody and figure this would be a good way to, uh, you know, interact with you guys on draft night because we'll be seeing who actually has the picks correct. And then, as Thomas said, we'll, we'll draw for some jerseys as well for anybody who enters. So good luck to everybody. And obviously, we want to make sure we, we uh, you know, talk about the draft 24-7. And Josh and I are going to have our picks too. So you get to compare to see if you beat Josh, if you didn't beat Josh. It's going to be a bunch of fun myself as well. If you don't have Venmo, you should get Venmo. I mean, Venmo is how we're doing it. So you're going to have to have Would you do have Cash App. Does, okay. For people, I see the comment from Taekwon. Do you have a Cash App? That's the only other thing that I can think of just off the top of my head. I've got a Cash App. So if you got that, let me know. I'll, I'll drop it in the description too for people watching it back or even right now. I'll, I'll drop the Cash App. We can do that. And we're going to be adding this to our descriptions for the next couple of shows. So obviously the Venmo is on your screen right now. It's very simple, but it'll be in both of our description boxes uh, as well. So jump in on it. It's going to be a bunch of fun. We'll talk a little bit more about it a little bit later on on the show tonight. I did see a super chat. We want to get that comment up on the screen here from Justin who says, who are your top picks at guard and tackle in the draft? I like Zach Zinter. Uh, uh, Zinter from Michigan, excuse me, and guard Javon, or Javon Fox Foster from Missouri for tackle to be Lane Johnson's replacement. Josh, there are a ton of offensive linemen. There are this is the offensive lineman draft, and which makes which which makes sense why a lot of people think they'll go offensive line at number twenty two overall, just because if you need to get Lane's replacement this year, you'd want to do it this year versus next year. This year's a lot stronger of a class. These names are all really, really good. They love the guy from Washington, though. They met with him multiple times. They feel like he is definitely plug-and-play ready to be our starting right tackle or even a guard if they need to. There are a lot of offensive line names Philadelphia can go ahead and throw around, and Zinter from Michigan is really, really good. He is. He really is. Uh, I would say, and I'm actually siding here with Michael H., who's, who threw out, I like Cooper Beeb. Personally, if I got to go with someone, it's probably Cooper Beeb as well. It just... Zenter's injury, he's probably going to be fine coming back from the injury, but still there's question marks on my side. But really, just looking at the tape and the film that I've watched, also some breakdowns from other other scouting reports, if you 
if you want that physicality that just just i don't know that dude who's who just nasty as a as a guard i would go after cooper beam so i don't necessarily say you could go wrong with his zach zinter uh but personally i would rank it a little bit higher for a cooper beeb uh again i mean you know we could talk all day till we're blue in the face about really any prospect and then also we look back and go like yeah 50 50 at best for like how we hit on these prospects um, but I mean, heck, you know, it's, it's Jeff Statlin at the end of the day. So really whoever you go with, I'm pretty confident that he can turn those into a, a good starter, a solid player, right. but it will be interesting because, you know, we've talked about it a number of times and I really believe that if you're going to go and take an offensive lineman, it should be, it really should be a guard, but certainly someone who has that flexibility to play guard and tackle. So you start them out in guard this year because I don't right. think that you have your starting guard. And then maybe you shift them out to the right tackle once, you know, Lane Johnson decides to hang him up and go to the WWE, which seems possible after, you know, his whole spurt there in WrestleMania. That that was pretty cool. Are you are you a uh, I don't think we talked about this or even Texas actually, which is weird, but are you are you WWE fan at all? Like I never you watch, was. I'm not I never watched it okay. growing up. I, I watched the I highlights of when in Lane bit, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really not. I, I, I did love the video of Jordan Milata going crazy when they brought John Cena out. Like, I understand how big oh, yes. that oh, is, yes. even if I don't watch the, the WWE. But, I mean, geez, it feels like our – it's really our generation is a little bit older are the guys who are really the OG WWE fans. And you could tell they were protecting Lane Johnson a little bit there. You know, Kelsey got to kind of swing some chairs. Lane didn't do much. Oh, yeah. But overall, oh, yeah. it was a good time. Yes, that was a blast. I, I Like I say, I'm not either, but for – for the fact that it was in Philly and you you knew that Kelsey and, and Lane probably you were going to be would. involved. It was like, ah, okay, I, I might watch a little bit, you know, we'll see. But yeah, it was, it was very cool. You're, you're able to get the, the script writers can get someone who's retired versus someone who's still got games to play and, you know, look right. ahead involved right. a little bit more. So probably, probably smart on their part, but uh, DKT with a $5 super chat. Appreciate it, man. It says uh, Troy Fotanu or Cooper DeGene in the first round. And I'll be satisfied. The Eagles would be too. The Eagles like them both. I think you have to trade up for either of those, though. Really, I mean, you think so? I it'd be unlikely to me. <sighs> after his pro day, probably. I, yeah. I think it was less likely after the pro day because yeah. the injury concerns and everything else. But I mean, he had to check every box, right? Like if you're a, if you're a team and you're going because he's getting all these top thirty visits, which makes sense, right? The medical staff is going to bring him in, get their doctors to look at him, say, "Yeah, okay, do we have questions here? Or is he good to go?" The last thing they needed was saying. Or all right, are there any limitations? We know you're an athlete, but are there any limitations to these drills or anything else that you could right. do? And he had to have answered all those questions. So in my mind, I'm like, the versatility, the weapon that he is, I get that, you know, some people are like, well, he's not a not a full blown corner. He should be a safety, or he's ah, should he should he stay at corner? I mean, he's he's a he's a game maker. I mean, he's he is a playmaker waiting to happen. It's it's the versatility like we talk about, and certainly in today's NFL. So I don't. I don't know. I mean, Fatanu is for sure. I think you got to trade up. But honestly, I would say Dejean yeah. too. You got to. You got to trade up and go get him. Well, and the Eagles love people that test off the charts. I mean, Nolan Smith was drafted for his for his uh, combine workout. I mean, yeah. truly, he was drafted for his combine workout because he blew them out of the water. And Dejean was incredibly fast. And that kind of leads me into this question from Ease of Football. It's not a super chat. He says, "Would you, would you be happy with Nate Wiggins?" He's someone who's mocked a lot to Philadelphia. I don't think you and I have talked a lot about Nate Wiggins. The kicker with him, though, is speed. A guy ran a 4-2 at the NFL Combine. He's six foot one. I mean, he is the definition of being the right size with the combined speed. He's like, like, like Ringo was big and Ringo was fast, but Ringo's a lot thicker than Nate Wiggins. Wiggins has a lot more mm -hmm. length in terms of the arms. He's a little bit taller than Keely Ringo, and he's a little bit faster too. He would be an excellent pick at 22 overall and would be a really safe option, Josh, if Philly just wants to just stay put, best player available, who's not an offensive lineman, and just let's just get better on defense. And Nate Wiggins would 100% do that for the Eagles, whether he starts this year in for James Bradbury, or he waits a couple of years, you put him and Ringo after Slay's gone, it, 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 it would not be a bad pick. He's incredibly fast. He is, yeah, he's blazing. Um, Isa Football says, I'd rather get uh, Nate Wiggins than Tyler Guyton. I think there's probably a lot of people that would agree with that. Probably so. Tyler Guyton's, you know, potential, and Lane Johnson has mentioned a number of times of how he does... He loves Tyler Guyton's game. He's got a lot of potential there as a, a replacement and things like that. Uh, but to your point, yeah, I mean, the only knock or the continual knock that I've seen, shout out to Tyler Wallace. I don't think he's here. I haven't seen him pop up yet, but he loves Nate Wiggins. How many times he said on different live streams and comments and everything else for the videos. Um, but, but Wiggins, he has a lot of potential. The only thing that people continue to try to bring up, and it, it's fair, like I, I understand 
the, the, the physicality or the size. You look at an Emmanuel Forbes and how he was torched. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the question was, hey, very slight frame. Now, sometimes it's an issue, sometimes it's not. But I think if you look more so at Wiggins and watching his game, I just don't know that it's as much of a, I don't know, going to be as much of a factor or a fair comparison even of saying like, okay, well, just because that guy had that issue, right. it's going to be the right. same here. So, you know, again, it, it, it remains to be seen, and it, it, a lot of it is is luck or chance, certainly with the corner position. I mean, go back and look at, you know, all these different drafts and saying, you say, hey, that guy's going to be a stud. Turns out to be a bust. Hey, that guy's not has right. doesn't have a chance. He turns out to be a stud. So it, it goes both ways. Uh, but yeah, if you just sit there at twenty two, based on mock drafts and different reports and everything else, it does seem a lot more likely if you're going to go corner that Wiggins would be available. And and I wouldn't hate it. That would be great. I still you know for just about everyone seems like the consensus is if you go with a corner, it's got to be Quinion Mitchell. But then we go back to the whole idea of then you have to trade up and with the draft picks where they're at. Right. Does it seem likely that that how he's going to give up draft capital to to move up in that situation and then not necessarily hamstring uh, hamstring yourself with the the remaining picks? But it almost seems like okay, do, do you, if you trade up there, then it's like a for sure you're trading back. Like with one of the second round picks, right. I, I can't imagine right. you're oh well, let's go ahead and take fifty and fifty uh, three or fifty one fifty three and then say well let's wait until what is it like one sixty one till the next one that it's just an eternity at that point. Um, I'm seeing people mentioning, what is this, Devontae Smith, 10-year, um, $200 million. Trust me. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be like that. I don't know if it's <laughs> going to be that crazy. 200 million. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I don't, you know, don't... he's hoping for that. <laughs> sure. Fully guaranteed, sure. I bet, too, right? It's, it's uh, <laughs> go ahead and give it $200 million. Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be, seeing... go ahead. The, the, I'm just curious here. I, this is all the first comment that I've seen, but um, a little creepy uh, says Josh, can we get the audio balance between you guys one day? I hope. Does anybody I saw just that. hear that? Is does is that, that mean that are, are are you louder or quieter than me? I I I, I, I I've never noticed this. Let's see yeah, if we get any know. comments. I, on I mean, it. I can hear you okay, but if anybody else knows or you can tell, let me. us know. We will we'll try to work on it. So okay. Um, I, I've, yeah, I'm, the, the I'm comment, adjusting your into... sound level here. I'm I'm trying to adjust okay, your sound okay, cool. level here. Yeah. So we'll we see. we can get this figured out. We do appreciate. Let us know in the comments. Comments from you guys. Yeah, we need you guys to tell us. There was it. Another comment earlier, too, just talking about the giant killer, getting back to the Boston Scott scenario and everything else. But um, Cindy Newsom actually said this a second ago, uh, but it was uh, the new giant killer is Saquon Barkley, which that that's fantastic, really, because, <laughs> you know, I mean, give them yeah. a dose of their own medicine. Say, hey, you remember this guy that you didn't even offer a contract for? Well, yeah, he's the new giant killer. So I'm good with that. Someone just said Thomas is louder, but Thomas talks louder naturally. That's a good point. My voice is much... Uh naturally louder so Fair. that could be it maybe i gotta turn myself down a little bit here i could try to oh, i could try says to talk sounds good louder though no i my voice is just okay. naturally louder and annoying see and this says josh is always louder and clearer even though we have the same microphone so who knows i'll have to play this back and listen and see, right. see what it says thomas mike is more full whereas josh's mic is more shut we're getting very very mixed signals here on what our mics sound like i feel like it's, okay. it's some say good josh some say bad thomas so all right is what it is <laughs> There's probably a good middle ground between that. Then, good if it's, if it's all over the place, then some people are alright with it. There Colin Dempsey Colin says, says Devontae Smith. I was gonna say four years, twenty-two to twenty-five that's million. About right. That seems realistic. Yeah, the, the, yeah with the AJ. only problem with Devontae Smith, and there was a report from ESPN's Tim McManus talked about on my show today, saying that they are actively engaged in contract talks. Which you know we we knew that they were doing that, but he said that, you know they're, they're they're engaging in contract talks. You think they were gonna push it to the fifth year option? It's probably not gonna happen. The only issue here is going to simply be the fact that do you pay him more than A.J. Brown? Because A.J. Brown makes $25 million a year, but that contract is two years old. And the way the market goes, you know, the cap space gets bigger. Inflation, for instance, is happening right now. I don't know how much of a factor that is. But do you pay Devontae Smith more than A.J. Brown? Conventional wisdom says no. But it, you know, Devontae Smith's argument is take A.J. off this team, and you do pay me $25 million a year. It's not my fault A.J. Brown's on this team. You want both of us. you got to pay me like I'm a number one. And— Honestly, maybe rightfully so. I think he definitely has has an argument there. And so you pay him 26. Does that make A.J. Brown upset? The sweet spot for me is 23 and a half. But again, I'm not, you know, Devontae Smith. If I offered me 23 and a half million dollars, I'd be very excited. But if you can get 25 million dollars, Josh, then, you know, you got to try and get your bag, right? For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, you can't knock him for that. To, to me, it's like, I, I think that he will go higher than A.J. Brown. And I think it's well warranted. 
yeah. to, to the point of the inflation and the idea of, hey, the cap continues to grow and everything else. Like it's just the part of the, the piece of the pie, really. And um, of course, I've got some dogs barking in the background. Dog. For those that can hear that. But, yes. uh, you know, but, but still, like you look at Devontae Smith there to your point, like it, it is he's earned it. And yes, whenever it's time for AJ to come up for a contract extension, then he would probably naturally vault over Devontae Smith because that's how this whole thing works. I mean, heck, even if we go back and look, I know it's not exactly the same fair comparison, uh, comparison but still, like, Jordan Mailata is the fourth highest paid tackle in the league. Like, he right. just jumped Lane Johnson. Now, would you say that Jordan Mailata is better than Lane Johnson? Eh, no. Maybe. Like, he's getting there, but not fully yet. And right. so over the last couple of years, it's like, yeah, but we're paying for what he is now versus whenever Lane got his contract done. So I think that most people understand that optics wise and, you know, media controversy and everything else people wanting to stir up might go, oh, but, you know, AJ's not going to be okay with that. So how he's got to be able to tiptoe around this and everything else. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, this is just me speculating as well, but I'm pretty sure that AJ Brown's going to be like, cool, like good for you. I get the whole idea when it's my turn for a contract extension, yeah. we're going to vault that. So I don't think it's really a big issue, uh, but it does bring up a fair question. I mean, you know, how much does Devontae Smith get and, and does that impact anything there within the locker room? I just, I just can't really buy that. Let's go to this uh, comment here from Jose Delphia. It's a good name there. Between late two and guys, hey, what's up? Uh, who you pick? I, I, I think Josh can answer this one. Josh, we, we know who, who you would prefer of this one, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I think it's a given for most people, but Latu Latu, if, if he's available at 22, yeah. that, I mean, that's a if, steal. Something if. happened Something happened very wrongly if he's there at 22. Like, right. Tyler Guyton will probably be solid as a pro, but Latu Latu, I mean, he's been, and I did a show about this talking a number of times, but like, he's been, as far as pass rush win rate, is between the Bosa brothers. And if you look at the pass rush win rate, that means a whole lot more normally than anything on sack totals. You, you can't necessarily right. go off of that. So his ability to win as a pure pass rusher, the impact that he makes now, athleticism score, you know, it's not quite up to the level of sometimes of Howie Roseman going, oh, hey, we're going to go with the, you know, the 90th percentile of an athletic player, <laughs> but it's, it's serviceable, like it's doable. But you see like all the array of pass rush moves that this guy has, it's totally different from, you know, again, like I I love Nolan Smith, but I'll throw this out. Nolan Smith is very raw. Like he does not have these pass rush moves where Leitu Latu comes in and it's like, man, automatically he can be a game changer and a game wrecker. So I think that, you know, 22 is probably a given. I don't know if there's anybody in the comments who disagrees and believes it's Tyler Guyton, but yeah, I'd love to hear the argument, I suppose, if there is. I mean, the, the big key, and I say this once a live show just because I want to just make it an emphasis because it's a really big deal. Quarterbacks are going to push people back, you know. And on on and on on a non-heavy quarterback draft, Latu is a top twelve pick, guaranteed. He's probably a top ten pick, guaranteed. But in this draft, where you will see five quarterbacks inside the top ten, four inside the top five, it's it's, it's a guarantee. I mean, those you are going to have five minimum picks that get pushed back, and Latu could be one of those guys that's there at seventeen or there at fifteen. And if you're at that number, Howie Roseman's traded up in four of the last five first rounds. He's been very very interested in going up to get the player that he believes makes an instant impact on this defense or this offense. And if he gets pushed back, then there's a real possibility that that could happen. Now. Brock Bowers was just brought into the chat. We, you and I have not talked about Brock Bowers yet. I want to do that in a second. First, though, I do want to mention the fact that we are doing something different for the jersey this year. If you're just joining us, we are doing an NFL Draft League, which is going to be a ton of fun, where you can try and guess the first round of the NFL Draft. And to get in on the fun, you just got to send a quick Venmo to at the Philly Special. See it on your screen. It's in my description box. It's in Jake's, uh, Josh's subscription box, or description box. I can't get my words right right now. Uh, $1, obviously, one entry. Multiple dollars, multiple entries. We're going to give away whoever wins this one, gets the uh, jersey, and then we'll randomly draw as well. And so Venmo was the way to go. We figured out it's the easiest way to keep track of all this, and so Josh is going to add that into our list. But drop a Venmo to get into our NFL Draft League. And the Draft League, if you're wondering, it looks something like, uh, let's see if I can get it on the screen. It looks something like, that's not it. One second. Let's make sure we got it here. My computer's messing up. There. It looks like this. You'll be multiple choice picking whichever ones you think is correct. And whoever gets the most right 
you're going to go ahead and win whoever the Eagles take in the first round, which could be Light Leitu Latu. It could be an offensive lineman. It could be somebody else. So we're going to have a bunch of fun with that. You guys have not joined us yet. Venmo is the way to go. And I think Josh is going to put his cash app in his description as well if you don't have Venmo. And people are saying that, so. Yes. Yep. Yeah. We'll and if you want a different there, jersey, so. it's 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 whoever's jersey. If you want Saquon Barkley's jersey, that's fine. Last year we just gave away a bunch of Jalen Carter sure. jerseys because Jalen Carter is the way to go. So you know, is what it is. Before yes. we get to Brock Bowers, we have a super chat from Shizo Flex who says it's a possible pick up Smith's option, then extend him. So essentially, it's a six seven year deal. First two years still being a rookie deal. No, technically not. If you were to go ahead and pick up his option, he then either plays the fifth year or you extend him. As soon as you extend him, it starts that year. So if you pick up the option. And then the next day, extend him. The contract that is the most recent is the active one. So, excuse me, it would just not be possible. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, Brock Bowers, Josh, quickly here. I do want to mention Brock Bowers because I've seen a lot of people in my comment section mentioning him. I want to talk about him on my show tomorrow. It's, it's a fascinating idea. And, again, great player, great town. He'll be there in the teens. I've seen a lot of people say that they want to go out and get Brock Bowers. I don't see how you feed him in this offense. I don't see how you have enough mouths to feed unless you want to make him your true wide receiver three, Josh, and basically run 12 personnel the entire time, but have Bauer split in the slot like he did a lot at UGA, which again is fine, but for a first round draft pick, the Eagles just have so many other needs. They don't need another weapon. Like the fact that he brought in Johnny, it, it was Johnny Wilson, right? It's either Williams or Wilson. I'm blanking on the uh, FSU guy. Wilson, it's, yeah. it's, it's, yep. it's Johnny Wilson, six foot seven. Later round draft pick, he's probably a day three sort of guy. That's who you take to be your wide receiver three. That's who you bring in to compete with Paris Campbell and compete with Devontae Parker. You don't need Brock Bowers. I honestly am getting off the Xavier Worthy train. I did shows on him, you know, months ago where I was like, Xavier Worthy, Mm -hmm. he'd be fun in this offense, and he would. But at at some point, Josh, you can only have so many weapons, and and, and Bowers needs to go somewhere that he's really actually needed in an offensive needy sort of a you know, situation, whereas Philadelphia might have the best offense in the league as it currently stands. I totally agree. Yes, I'm right there with you. Um, Pete Nathan, though, says only guy worth moving up for is Brock Bowers, so he's on that train. Uh, he's a good talent, but to your point, again, it's like, yeah, there's only so many mouths to feed. Right. And with the way that you've already invested in this group, I get the whole notion of, hey, Dallas Goddard is the same, or actually he's older than Zach Ertz was whenever we drafted Dallas Goddard. So sure, you know what? If we go draft a tight end in this draft, it's not going to surprise me, but it's not the luxury pick to me that we can afford to say, hey, we're going to trade up and go get a tight end who's going to start out as our backup. Now he could he could play right. a lot. You could get a two t- tight end personnel, utilize a different scheme of, of the offense or whatever, but the options that you already have on this team, to me, it, it doesn't make as much sense. You say, hey, you know what? We've got other holes, again, like we're talking about, offensive line, right guard, cornerback, right. linebacker. Yeah. There's a lot on the defense that we've mentioned here, uh, even an edge rusher too. I mean, hey, if, if Leitu Latu is there, that seems more of a likely trade-up than than going after a tight end. So uh, it's fun. You know, It, it would be yeah. exciting because you just keep adding more elements to this offense, and I know that this league is continuing to get more and more of offense wins championships but still, like at the end of the day, you have to look at it and say, Dallas Goddard is there. If you get your second option here and you spend that much to to trade up and get a guy, I mean, like we're getting yeah. in the comments all the time, like this this dude needs to be everything, not just a, hey, he can be a dynamic game, uh, dynamic weapon in the passing game, but like he needs to be able to block and he needs to be able to be counted on in a lot of those different situations because you have Saquon Barkley and that would be a question here because he doesn't really have the best – I mean, watch his film or just, you know, watch the ability that he has there. You know, run blocking could be a question, could be an issue on that side. If I'm going to trade up, in my mind, I got to say to myself, there are no limitations for this player. In my And I, I know that's, you know, that may be crazy because you have first round picks, you know, you still don't know for sure. But we're at 22, and if you go trade up for a top 10, that's really kind of like a top five guy because we've mentioned it a number of times of how many quarterbacks are going to go off the board. You, you almost have take your pick. And it just seems like a little bit too high of a price to go after for that guy. So we'll see. The hope would be, honestly, that like, um, I think that that the, what the Giants were at his workout and was it the Jets with the Giants and Jets? I think the teams that were there, they, it would be cool if both. the Giants yeah. wasted a, a, a I say I say waste. He'll be he'll be really good. But still, like sure. the holes that they have in their organization, you go after a tight end. Um, but yeah, I, I can't imagine it. There's there's other options, I'd say. Mason Jackson with the $5 Super Chat. What's your thoughts on Peyton Wilson, the NC State linebacker? I think he fits Fangio's system better, but Cooper is the better linebacker. Yeah, you know, drafting for system versus drafting overall skills are always really hard because, you know, is Vic Fangio going to be here for 10 years? You want your linebacker to be here for 10 years? 
Edric Cooper just seems so plug-and-play ready right now, Josh. He just feels like you put him in this defense with N'Kobe Dean, with Devin White, and and he's just going to fly. He's just he, It's just going to work. If, if there was a guarantee, and it's always impossible to guarantee because it's the NFL draft, but if it felt like there was sure. someone you could just plug in immediately and be like, this kid's ready to rock, Edric Cooper feels like the guy. And whether that's right or not, you know, remains to be seen. Nothing against Peyton Willis or Peyton Wilson, and if you could – get him because someone wanted Edron Cooper in round one and then he's not there in round two, then, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm with you. I continue to say it in every one of the mock drafts. It's almost impossible for me to – I know this is crazy, but a lot of people are in the same point. But it's almost impossible to me as whenever I do the mock draft, as soon as we get into the second round, I'm like, I and Edron Cooper. And it's, okay, if, if I need to trade yeah. up, we'll do that. But if I go yeah. and all of a sudden I make it to the, the Eagles draft pick there at 50, then – Hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and immediately take it. There's without question the most obvious blatant choice in my mind. Now the question is like, you know, does Harry Roseman do that or does he decide, "Hey, depending on what we take in the first round there, is that an offensive lineman spot and we'll figure out the the linebacker whenever we get later in the rounds or, you know, if we if we miss out on one, yeah, there's a couple other options there." I, I don't know. You you still want to look at the top 30 visits are important. They're not everything. But, yeah. you know, you lean towards that position. But, uh, you know, again, like the, the comment from Mason is like Peyton Wilson. Sure. I think he's got a lot of talent. Sure. It, it's it's too much for me. And there's there's, I don't know, double standards and double edged swords to all these things here. But it's like the injuries and, and the potential risks there are not worth going for a Peyton Wilson, certainly over Edger and Cooper. But but I sure. would honestly say in my mind, Junior Colson would be my second like Peyton Wilson would be third probably in that category. And it's just really because of the injuries. I could be dead wrong and Peyton Wilson could be very sturdy and healthy and everything else. But I, I just have to say for the injury history and what, I, what the Eagles need with their fit, junior Colson is probably the second option there on that side. Um, you know, again, you do bring up a good point of like, Hey, Fangio may not be here for eternity. He may not be here for a long time, right. but the, the overall scheme and the way that the Eagles have built this defense seem to rely strongly on that type of Fangio scheme. And so again, you go back to that and say, yes, Edger and Cooper. And I think most everyone's mind is the first pick there. And then my right. preference and opinion is junior Colson, but I, I could totally understand it because there's a lot to like with Peyton Wilson and the fact that he plays incredibly hard. He's made a lot of plays happen. And obviously again, the athleticism just tests off the charts. So I don't think you can go wrong there. Um, but yeah, my two cents from where I'd lean at least for the linebackers spot. Justin said, donated Thomas want to show Josh appreciation. I bet Josh appreciates that, but also wondered what are your thoughts hey, on James Williams? That. Safety from Miami, he's 6'5", could possibly use him as a real prepper to be a hybrid safety uh, slash linebacker. What are your thoughts on hybrid safeties, Josh? They, they, there was a big run on them like three years ago. Whenever the Jabril Preppers draft was, was it was really like, mm -hmm. the, get your hybrid safety because he can play linebacker. And really, it's just kind of turned into like, can you can, can you play the box and can you cover? Like, you're not going to be at the linebacker position. We're not going to have you kind of roaming as this rover. And it was the old UT defense. They called it the rover, who would be kind of this hybrid safety, hybrid linebacker. But do you like the idea? Do you hate the idea? What do we know about this guy from Miami if we do know anything? Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I have not watched uh, much, if any. It's really just from, uh, I guess, perhaps a little bit of, of Cameron Kitchens, um, quite honestly. So... Uh, not a hundred percent sure on that side. I'm going to have to look into it, but yeah, I mean, just in terms of the general hybrid safety dynamic there, I, I don't know. I mean, I've kind of gone back and forth on it because it, it, with the Legion of boom, right? Like that was the, the, the thing you, you get these bigger, more athletic, stronger players and everything right. else, but it, it, it's a copycat league. And eventually it's like, okay, you catch up and figure out, okay, this is how we beat that. And so it's, it's not like it can't ever work. And, and there's a, a cycle that it just continues to kind of revolve, eventually get back to a certain standpoint. But in my mind, it's like, look at the, look at the dominating teams with the safeties that they have. And there is some hybrid playmaking ability but i would just be curious because from what i'm pretty sure i could be totally off because again i've watched very limited on this but i don't know that he has the best athleticism so size is great but like if you don't pair that with just fluidity and athleticism right it becomes more of a question mark and maybe even more of a detriment because it's like hey you do have that size but if you can't make up for it then uh i guess it's the alternative to like a johnny wilson for example we we're talking about him earlier but the wide receiver that the eagles brought in I mean, that dude's 6'6", 6'7", 230. 
and he ran just about as fast as AJ Brown in the 40 and then he jumped higher than AJ Brown. Like like that's <laughs> insane. That's unbelievable. Now I know he doesn't Very have good. quite the fluidity, but like that's ridiculous. You should not yeah. be doing that at his size. And so um I don't know. I will have to I appreciate it Justin the super chat. I'll have to watch more film on him quite honestly, but um I don't hate the the idea of a hybrid, certainly within a Fangio scheme, because you can move them all over the place. And I think that's why mm-hmm. Cooper Gene would fit so well. Uh, but I don't know 100% about Williams. I have to, to watch more film on him. Yeah, hybrid safety, who's you know, linebacker safety, is different than safety corner. And DeGene, I think, is a little more that than the whole hybrid linebacker safety. When you're saying hybrid safety linebacker, he's probably sure. too slow to be a safety but he's too big to not be a linebacker, and so you try to fit him in this little square peg in a round hole. It's tough to do. Um, Cap Benson says, can we just keep the main thing the main thing? I think Jalen Hurts would appreciate that. He says, extend Devontae already. Prefer before JJ gets his contract and save us some moolah. Well, I agree, and I really feel like if you can get it before CeeDee Lamb's extension, you're going to feel much better about yourself because as we saw today, Josh Allen, who was, you know, so many Eagle fans were throwing around there. I think you and I both mentioned him on our shows as, hey, if he's that upset, why don't you come to Philadelphia? And then they gave him $88 million guaranteed, and you're like, oh, well, that's why the Eagles didn't a little much him because it's insane. But that drives the price up, and Reddick's price, whether the Jets are going to extend him or not, is is going to go up because of it. Because he can make the argument, I've been doing it longer than Josh Allen, more consistently than Josh Allen, blah, blah, blah. The same goes for wide receiver. If CeeDee Lamb gets $28 million a year, Smitty has to get $28 million a year. There's, I mean, what's your argument? You're not as good as CeeDee Lamb. Do you want to tell Devontae Smith that? Because I don't think he believes it, and I don't think most Eagle fans would believe it. So... If you get the deal done sooner, you save the money. Jalen Hurts did. He was the highest paid quarterback in the league for like 10 days. Then Lamar's contract came, right? And Lamar's was bigger. Mm-hmm. And then Dax is going to be bigger. Like, it's, it's 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 smart to do. The problem is it takes two to tango, Josh, right? Just because I want you to sign a team-friendly deal doesn't mean you want to sign a team-friendly deal and the world spins on and on. So, obviously, we would like to get Devontae Smith's deal done. It will get done. He is not going to enter the fifth year of his deal without a contract. They're not going to let him walk. He's one of the better draft picks they've had in a very long time, especially at wide receiver. He's probably the best one they've had in a very long time. He'll be fine. He's probably just waiting to make sure he maximizes the cheddar. That way it's, uh, you know, generational wealth for many generations to come. Yes, absolutely. As he should. You know, he's it's, he it's well worth it. It's very sure. well earned. And like we've said a number of times, too, it's, it's not only like what he does on the field, but it's off of it. Like, yeah. Not every receiver, as we know, is is like a Devontae Smith. Like he, for the most <laughs> part, keeps his head down and he's like, you know what? It's team ball. And like that's how he's always been. So uh, yeah, there's 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 not a an ounce. There's not a point zero one percent chance in my mind that Devontae Smith Zero. is is yeah. in danger of, you know, leaving the Eagles. He won't be here in Philly. Like they're not gonna get this <laughs> thing done. It is a priority in Howie Roseman's mind. But also, I mean, on the flip side, again, it's like there's not a huge rush probably on Smitty's camp to say, well, let's get this thing done because if he does happen to wait there, then all of a sudden, hey, those new wide receiver contracts that come in will help his case because he can he can go out there. Like you said, he can ask and say, well, hey, C.D. Lamb got this, Justin Jefferson got this. Even if yep. it's not the exact same money, it'll be very close, and so it naturally will help his argue or his argument there on that side. So, um, yeah, he'll he'll get done. Let you know we can we can relax. Everybody can calm down on that side. It'll just be it, it could be in the next couple of weeks. It could be in the next couple of months, or it it could be it could be later. Realistically, I can't imagine that you're going to get into the season or certainly after this coming season because, as we all right. know, how he loves to get it done early. Um, but yeah, I'm not concerned that we're going to be sitting here you know, doing one of these like during the season and be like, well, I don't know. Smitty hasn't signed yet for some reason. Like that could be a little bit concerning. So it'll, it'll be fine. Well, and CD Lamb is the one to worry about here. People talk about Justin Jefferson and sure, like, like Jefferson's contract is going to reset the market, but Jefferson is better. He's, he's the best wide receiver in the league. If you're taking straight wide receiver, you know, no other factor involved. Who's the best? It's it's Justin Jefferson. I mean, Tyree Kill is very good. A.J. Brown is absolutely fantastic. But if all of us had a gun to our head to take the best receiver in the league right now, I think 99 out of 100 of us would say Justin Jefferson. So he's going to get 30, maybe 31, yep. 32, 33. Smitty doesn't need 30. He's not as good as Justin Jefferson. He's very good, but not Justin Jefferson. So you come down a little bit, and you pay him like C.D. Lamb, and, and then everyone's happy. So... We'll wait and yes. see exactly how that is going to go down. Uh, if you have not hit a thumbs up button, make sure you guys do that as we have 142 likes. Got a bunch of people watching the show right now. We appreciate you guys. And if you have not joined our that. NFL Draft League, which is happening, obviously, during the NFL Draft, this is what it's going to uh, look like. It's going to be very, very simple. The person who predicts 
as close to possible, because it's almost possible to be 100% accurate, the first round of the NFL Draft via our draft league is going to get the Eagle jersey of your choice, whether it's the first round draft picks or Saquon Barclays or somebody else. Send a Venmo to at the Philly special. You see it on your screen right there. He'll give you the login code, and that gets you locked into the NFL Draft League where it's a multiple choice where you can kind of decide, and it looks obviously like this, to see who goes number one overall. Spoiler alert, it's probably going to be Caleb Williams. Who do you think's <laughs> number two overall, Josh? I, I'm going to pick Jaden Daniels. This is mine right here. I haven't made my picks yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be Jaden Daniels. Do you? I mean, it could be Drake May, but... Washington and mm-hmm. Jane Daniels is that is is that a lock? Uh, so I mean, I'll 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 just share. I went Drake May, but I it's okay. it's okay. I could totally see Jane Daniels. So honestly, that's the one where it's like it could automatically be wrong after the the second pick, which is fine because, like you said, it's percentage based. Uh, but yeah, right. I, I almost considered keeping like one and just saying like who will be picked first and just putting four options of Caleb Williams, but <laughs> just just to make sure you just know you have your case. options, you have, you have your crazies out there who are gonna say someone else. So we, we gave you some other options to choose from, but um. I don't know. I, I feel like for some reason Drake May might slightly edge out there, but it, it wouldn't surprise yeah. me. It, it will be interesting, honestly, whoever that is, of like how how many quarterbacks we're going to get in like the top 10 because we've talked about oh, it a number yeah. of times. But it, the draft just gets better and better for the Eagles and really you know any non-quarterback needy team, the more quarterbacks that get drafted really early because then you're, you know, the, the prospects that are not those positions keep getting pushed back there. Um, so... It, it'll be fascinating on that side. I'm where, where are you? I, I've kind of thought there's going to be, I think I could see like five, five in the I top five. 10. Is that crazy? Yeah. Five. Yeah. No, I don't think so. And I think, I think this pick right here on your screen four is, is going to be the real kicker here. I, I, I really think what's going to happen is you are going to see one Caleb Williams, two Jaden Daniels, three Drake may now Jaden Daniels, Drake making flip flop, but those three are one, two, three. Before someone comes up, it's probably going to be either Denver, the Minnesota Vikings, you can throw in the Las Vegas Raiders, although they're a little bit more unlikely, and and maybe you mix in like the New York Giants if they're really wanting to get crazy. And then they're going to take J.J. McCarthy. He'll be the fourth quarterback taken. Those four are all guaranteed as at the top five, Josh. But you got to remember that Michael Panix had an incredible pro day. He's healthy. They love what they did. I mean, you look at the UT game. I mean, he was absolutely incredible. He's going to go in the first round, and there's going to be a team that comes up from middle of round two into round one to get Bo Nix. I, I think you're going to see all of those. I think you're going to see six in the first round, and I think there's a very good chance for five inside the top ten. I, I Teams need quarterbacks. What you learn in the National Football League over the past ten years, if you don't have somebody who can go toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, you don't have somebody. And the Eagles had somebody mm-hmm. to go toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. I mean, come on. It was possible you can make the argument that 49ers had somebody in Brock Purdy although you know Brock Purdy is still a little iffy in terms of how good of a quarterback he is in my opinion but you've got to have somebody who can go toe-to-toe and if your quarterback was Spencer Rattler or not excuse me uh, was uh oh what was the Falcon quarterback this past year I just ruined my whole entire take what was his name Desmond Ritter I don't know why I said Spencer Rattler but if you yes. had Desmond Ritter pre Kirk <laughs> Cousins you knew you didn't have a quarterback, and there are a lot of teams with guys like Desmond Ritter who are going to take a quarterback this year. You see five in the first round, but probably really six. Yes, yeah, I, it, it, and it'll make it better. So um, it, it will be interesting to see. But yeah, you're 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 certainly right. You need your quarterback, and some Gotta teams pay too much. Quite honestly, I mean, for for yep. your quarterback, it might be too early, but. Uh, we'll see. It, it will make life easier. So as Xander here with a two super chat, appreciate that. It says uh, defensive line round one, linebacker O line round two or O-line round one, and then cornerback linebacker round two. So, all right. Either way, Let's see. kind of a consistent O-line linebacker. And then defender. Sorts. Yeah, yeah. They're going to take alternate. an offensive lineman in the in, in the first two rounds. You know they are. You, you As much as you don't want it, and we all hope it's yeah. in round two, we get a little sexier pick in round one, just be ready for it. I mean, there's a very real chance that they just, boom, 22, O-line, and we all go, Yay, that's so exciting. But then five years from now, it's like, yeah, that was so exciting. Remember, the Lane Johnson pick at four was not very exciting. I mean, at all. But it was like, we need to tackle. And they got to tackle that was probably the best player in that entire draft. So, you know, it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, yeah. I, I I jumped the gun here. Here's David Turn. Turny? Turn? Great show. Thoughts on round two picks. It's either offensive lineman or cornerback. Whatever they don't get. Whichever they don't get, Josh. Offensive line or quarterback. Or cornerback. Take your pick. 
or Adrian Cooper. Yeah, I I still keep saying that I think it's it's likely that it's going to be offensive line in the first round. Yeah. So if it is that, then I would say second round linebacker and I mean how he just loved the trenches. So it, I I could very realistically see offensive yeah. line and then linebacker and edge or edge right. and linebacker. You know, just yeah. keep it there. So that that's what I would expect to happen. That's not my preference, as we've said for a number of times, but. Um, yeah, it, it's it's going to be interesting because you know does Howie trade back? You know, do we? Do, it doesn't end yeah. up not being two round two picks. You know, is he trying to get a little bit more draft capital? Because yeah. Daniel Jeremiah and many others have said this too. Like, if you need a wide receiver or you need a tackle, this is the best draft for it. So mm -hmm. I've I've heard the argument of well, hey, we need to we could wait, we could wait one year and get Lane's replacement, which is true, but still like it's great in you know conventional wisdom is like hey let's take advantage of some of the surplus if you don't have to overpay right for what we know we're going to eventually need and if tackle is this draft class then i don't know if, if, if certainly if you don't get it in the first round i've got to imagine that you're going to sit there and do that in the second round but yeah. that's where i keep coming back to you of it, it's not the it's not the sexy pick and I won't be just completely thrilled with it but it'll make sense and you say well hey this is the tackle draft and you go ahead and get one of those guys. Now, wide receiver is a different story. I don't think that we need to draft a player as early as a second round for receiver for receiver position. But tackle does make a whole lot of sense, especially when looking at this draft class. Eighty-eight uh, SMC says Buffalo needs wide receiver in the first. Would you trade back? I wouldn't, but how he might. And if Buffalo is willing to give you, I don't know, another second plus next year's second. I mean, the trade from a second to an earl or a late first is is a lot less than going to ten. So. I think it's possibly multiple teams. I mean, listen, the Chiefs need a wide receiver desperately now. You saw the, I mean, the, the Rasheed Rice news. Whether that knocks him out of the league or it doesn't, who knows? But they definitely mm -hmm. need a, uh, they definitely need a wide receiver. And Philly's in a good spot. If you love a wide receiver, if you gotta have Xavier Worthy, or you, you know, really love, um, what's the guy's name? There's the other Texas receiver and the other LSU receiver, and you pair in Keon Coleman. There are a lot of good receivers in this draft, as Josh just mentioned. This is the wide receiver draft, and you're going to see a bunch of good ones come out of this one. So if you want to come to 22 and get them, then you definitely have the uh, ability to do so. Um, what are your guys' dream draft picks? I think we both think the dream would be Quinion Mitchell in terms of, like, if we could have anybody. I do think Jared Verse would be huge for Philadelphia. If somehow Dallas Turner fell, but we're talking, like, like dream is likely, you know, like a, a, a real possible dream instead of, like, Caleb Williams or, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. or one of the top picks overall. I think Jared Verse is going to be very, very good, and I really think you're going to see Quinion Mitchell become one of the better cornerbacks in this league. Either one of those two guys, I think, are an absolute home run steal if Philadelphia could go ahead and get them. But there are a lot of good players in this draft. I mean, we talked about Nate Wiggins. We talked about Cooper DeGene. We talked about all the mm -hmm. offensive linemen. Byron Murphy, the D-tackle out of Texas, is incredible. I mean, he is really, really good. And him next to Jalen Carter with Jordan Davis would be hard to beat. There's a lot of good players in this draft, but there are every single year. We're always excited about, like, five guys when you're sitting there in the early 20s. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Apparently, we've got Lane Johnson and Bryce Huff in the chat, yeah. too. If that's yeah, actually get back to work, Lane. Seems, get back to work. Evidently. If you guys could come on the show, that'd be fantastic. So, um, but no, I yeah, I agree with you. There's there's lots of things here. Mr. Ethos says, uh, you know, acting like we can't get a tackle later. That's uh, old BS, not working anymore. Like, okay, I get it. It's Jeff Stoutland. You can wait. But again, to sure. the point of the surplus of this draft, it just does make a whole lot of sense. You, you take advantage of a first round type talent. Not all of them are Jordan Mailata. Some of them are Lane Johnsons. You know, so you just kind of balance that. But yeah, that's where I would would lean towards. But I'm I'm totally with you on the fact of who's the dream. If you could get Quinn on Mitchell, if he is available, you don't have to trade up too much, or somehow he keeps slipping further back to you, then that would be fantastic. Um, Sean Robinson says Latu is the dream. That's fine. Hey, I get I get that. If you understand, or, or if you're looking for an edge or a pass rusher to replace, that makes some sense. Um, I was also looking up a second ago. I don't believe that. Rishi Rice has been terminated. I, I saw I saw a comment about no, that. No, 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 he's not terminated. He, he I think there's a warrant out. I know for his you arrest. didn't say that. I saw a comment earlier. Someone oh, said he oh, had oh. been terminated. I, I no, I didn't. He's not officially, but the, the Chiefs will take a receiver. That that's that's for sure. Especially with all things considered, now they they're, they're going to for sure take a receiver. And, and it's the NFL that would choose to terminate uh, Rishi Rice, right? Like like in this situation, the Chiefs won't cut him. They will wait for the league to make their sort of ruling, which could be 
it, it'll probably be four to eight games, if I had to just guess, based on my very limited knowledge of the situation, the alleged situation, if you will. But that that's my guess in terms of, uh, you know, what I would say in that situation and why we should be appreciate having Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, who seemingly are model citizens who are just yeah. there to play football. So, you know, any Big Macs like Devontae Smith loves his McDonald's. Absolutely loves them. <laughs> loves them. That is unbelievable, honestly. Loves them. The fact that he no sleep. McDonald's. As well as he can, you know, I'm obviously not a professional athlete, so I can't relate in that sense. But like, you know, I've got two kids. And so just the idea of trying to get myself out of bed and go to the gym and go do all these other things and play in a game while doing that on McDonald's diet does not even like I don't he's just he's just different. And, you know, good for him that he can actually do that. But I I can't quite fathom that type of uh, that type of world. So. I agree. But that's why that's why he's so great. That's that's why he's Smitty. He's the Slim Reaper. Someone says I got rice on my dynasty league. <laughs> FML. Ooh. Yeah, that stinks. Bummer. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Have fun with that. Um, let's just go rapid rapid fire here. We're at the top of the hour. I want to wrap up here pretty quickly. Um, a couple more questions, then we're gonna wrap things up. We'll be live obviously next week. Josh has a lot of live shows during the week as well, and a lot of uh, you know, normal shows as we do every single day. So make sure you guys subscribe. I'm almost at forty seven thousand subs. If you want to help me with fifty more, get to forty seven thousand. I appreciate that too. Just there you go. Yes. Subtle absolutely. plug there. We're marching towards fifty. Josh is well ahead at fifty almost two, but we're trying to get to fifty here, so hit the sub button. We'd appreciate that. You got Kool-Aid that. McKinstry. By the way, Kool-Aid McKinstry. I gotta I was going to mention real quick. I got the the first official notification for the draft league. So Dustin Haygood, I got the one. So I got you down in the, the draft league. And for anybody else that does, I will send you the link. Um, so as soon as you do that. But Dustin, you were, you were on the board. Appreciate that. There you go. There you go. Drop a Venmo to Josh. Get into the draft league. And the winner is going to get uh, an Eagles jersey of their choice in terms of um, – and it's the new jersey style too, unless you want the Kelly Green that's on your screen right now. It's so true, yes. You. The, but, the watermark uh, on that side. Jump, I'm not a really a fan on. yet. I'm still trying to. I'm not either. You know, it's it, it just, it's different. I don't know that it goes fully yet. It, it, it'll probably grow on me. I'll be like, ah, it's, it's fine. But right now it's, it's strange. Curly McKinstry's name is mocked a lot. We don't talk about him a lot. Um, you know, I like the guy. I think that the injury he was cleared of today, but it's obviously, you know, weighed in on his draft stock a little bit there. I just think there are probably better secondary pieces if you had to pick. So, I don't hate the idea, and he's an option if you want to stay put at number 22 overall, but it is what it is. Yeah, he's a possibility. I, I think, um, I don't know, we, we, again, the easy answer or the easy um, you know selection there is, as far as cornerback goes to, to Queen on Mitchell, but I think if mm-hmm. if you had the option between the two, certainly at, at 22 and you're waiting, then I think Wiggins from Clemson would be the, the preferred preference there. But, yeah, I've seen that as a, as a potential in some mock drafts. Uh, Cooper to Gene, the the Cooper draft has I've seen a number of those of people posting on Twitter. But you go Cooper to Gene, then you go Edron Cooper, and then you go uh, Cooper Beeb. Mm-hmm. I I wouldn't mind that either. That would be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of different options for as far as on that side. We haven't talked about it actually, and I just saw Pete's comment I did here. Too. But yeah, the week one, Brazil. really really quickly, it's it's Brazil. Go ahead. I mean, I'm I'm actually really bummed about this, quite honestly, because it was a lock. I texted you way back when, you know, I'm like, hey, if, if Packers are in Philly, we're going to go because Sandy, you know, Cheesehead and all that other stuff. Like, it just makes perfect sense. We're going to go to that game. And Brazil, I mean, come on. Really? Like, it does. I know. It's a, I, and I understand, you know, people say like, well, you this is the price you pay for a contender or for a team that's really good and going to get a lot of views and everything else. The NFL tried to expand and all that other stuff. But the Cleveland, the Browns made so much more sense to me than the Packers. I mean, it's just, you could have an NFC potential, you know, like early possibility for NFC championship rematch, you know, but like have those two teams playing in Philly on a Sunday night football, I'd imagine yeah. or Monday night football yeah. be primetime game. And you're going to get tons of eyes on a Brazil game on Friday night anyway, just because it's, it's unusual and it's in Brazil mm-hmm. and it's like, Oh, Hey, who's it going to be? So, um, I don't know. I, I have a stake in it, obviously, because I really wanted to go to that game in Philly. But nonetheless, week one is Friday night. You have to have Peacock subscription unless for those, you know, Philly local, you'll you'll get the channel. But unless if you're not, then uh, and you don't want to pay for the Peacock subscription, Thomas and I will be live. We'll be streaming it. You can hang out with us and you don't have to pay for the subscription. So there you go. 
There you go. I agree. I, you, b- game's that big you want at home, and it's not going to be at home, and the Packers have a very large contingent in Brazil, so it could be more of a Packers home game, but it is what it is. So, All right, well, we're going to wrap it up here on a Wednesday Link Live. As always, we do it every single Wednesday night. Next Wednesday will be two Wednesdays before the NFL draft because we'll do one on Wednesday and the draft will be Thursday. So make sure you guys subscribe and get ready for that. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us uh, and get in on our NFL draft uh, league. So shoot a Venmo to Josh. He'll send you the link, get you into our draft league where the winner is going to go ahead and get an Eagles jersey of their choice. We'll talk more about that on our shows as well. For Josh Davis, I'm Thomas Mott. We sign off. We'll see you guys uh, in the next one. We'll see you. Go Birds.